with you. That's good enough. Um, anyway, so I wanted to do a TDD report with you. There's not a lot of subjects going on. So I figured, hey, we'll combine our shows and uh, I'll have you. This is Muzzle Mike from the ITL joining us on the TDD report. And I wanted to do just a single subject this week um, talking about um, something to do with science. And that's about how do you think if the human race should come to an end, how do you think the human race would come to an end? Now, there's always destruction. We could blow ourselves up with nuclear weapons. We could have an asteroid impact. But I'm thinking, to my mind, more likely the human beings, we're going to actually destroy ourselves. We're going to blend into virtual reality, um, do our own little matrixes with virtual reality, disappear into there and not want to come back out again. We'll probably create some kind of humanoid robot companions and then not really want to have relationships with each other again because we'll have the perfect companion. We won't have to put up with a human being and all their, you know, eccentricities and stuff like that because whatever robot you buy it's going to be made to be 100 percent compatible with you because i'm thinking you know they, they talk about if there's all these intelligent races out there they must reach a certain point to where they just don't communicate anymore and is it because they destroy themselves or because something else happens where they reach a certain point and you're they're just never heard from again and i thought the way human beings are with video games already if we could create a virtual reality to where someone was at oh you're is that your dog Yep, this is Pepper. <clears throat> oh, okay. Just like my cats do during my TDD report. They don't normally get the chance on the ITL. Yeah. But anyway, if there if there's a certain point reached where we have virtual reality, where we get to be the king of the world, the god of the world, we can pretty much make it whatever we want. Nobody's going to want to leave, really, once they've created the world like that. I mean, I, I think people end up uh, starving to death, maybe in some cases, maybe die of old age and never want to come back to reality. You know, in other words, once you're in the perfect world, why would you want to come back out again? Uh, I, I mean, if you'd have asked me the same question, say, 15, 10, 15 years ago, yeah. I would have laughed at it. Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, to the way the thing, everything's going today, I would do with you. Yeah. I would have it. Yeah, it just, it just seems like we're, we're trying to create these perfect worlds. And as we create these perfect worlds, people become less and less tolerant with dealing with real-world situations. I mean, look with the people with road rage now. I mean, this is the first uh, political round that I remember where you'd have one side, you know, constantly attacking the other, you know, and riots and stuff like that, and people beating up each other just at a political rally. I mean, that wasn't really, I mean, other than the war. Now, there was the war demonstrations in the 60s, but, you know, to just, for no other reason than you disagree with somebody, everybody getting angry and wanting to lash out and stuff like that. People are just getting less well, and less tolerant of each other. I see the war demonstration back in the 60s. They were standing up for something. Yeah, that, that was actually a cause. There, that yes. wasn't like focused because, well, I don't like this candidate or I don't like this other, so I'm going to beat up their supporters. It wasn't really in the 60s that way that, you know. I mean, myself, the way I see technology, yes, in a way it brings us together. I mean, I can reach out and talk to you like we are not right now. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Nobody really has a true conversation with each other. It seems like. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much. Go ahead. You could die of being lonely. Yeah. Yeah. Pe people have all this connectivity, but they're so lonely and stuff like that, and they try to substitute something for the loneliness. And in a virtual world, you may not actually, if you create your virtual world the way you want, it may be where you're not actually interacting with any other human beings. Every one of the people that you supposedly are interacting with are just artificial creations. So you're the only real human being in the world. And, you, and the people have to move around to keep their muscle tone up and everything yeah. else. Sit in, sit in your own little chair or whatever in your own little virtual world ain't doing that. Yeah. And I'm thinking what may actually accelerate it and bring it in more is actually a good cause. Now think about the people now that they're hooking up their brains to electrodes because these people are totally paralyzed. They're quadriplegic and they can actually have the sensation of being able to do things, uh, use a computer, explore different worlds and stuff like that. Now, that's a good cause. I'm not saying I would ever want to deny somebody that's a paraplegic the ability to hook their brain up to a computer and to be able to do stuff that they couldn't do otherwise. But you know technology, it's not going to stop there. There's always two sides of a coin. Yeah. Yeah, it'll start with the disabled people, but then the able-bodied people will want the same thing too. They'll want their brains to be logged onto the computer so they can enter the virtual world in all aspects. I mean, you'll have all the sensations, the sensations of touch, sensations of smell, you know, maybe you'll even be able to feel the wind 
uh, touching your body with some way that they can do it with your brain waves or whatever. But I mean, it, it, it doesn't even have to be that real because you look at now people playing video games and stuff like that. There's a psychological disorder supposedly of people being disabled or being uh, so addicted to video games they don't eat or they you know don't associate with their friends and their friends have to do a, an intervention because they're doing too many video games. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, I mean, along, along with it, I mean, they don't... These people falling up with different modes, not, not distinguishing right from wrong. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing. When you're in a virtual world, why do you need to consciously really care if you, you know, kill somebody because it's just a virtual being? You're not killing a real person. But what is it doing exactly. to you psychologically, I mean? So whenever they pop out of the virtual world, picking up a gun and shooting somebody, it really doesn't mean much to them. Yeah, and will you get so engrossed with it that you can't tell? Remember, like in the Matrix movies, you found out later on in the movies that there was no such thing as leaving the Matrix when you were supposedly took the headset off or took the uh, little device out of the back of your neck. You were just in another Matrix is all. It was just another Matrix. It wasn't. It was just layer upon layer upon layer. So how do you distinguish, I mean, distinguish which is the real? I do like my video games, my slash them up video games, but I mean, it's not like I sit there yeah. hours playing them. I might play them maybe an hour a month, you know what I mean? Oh, I'll admit I like the first-person shooters. I don't play them so much anymore because I've played all the ones I like and played them until I was you know, pretty much done doing everything, but it's, it's fun to do. It's fun to be in a virtual world and be able to do whatever you want and not have any consequences or anything like that. I'm more of the old-fashioned, like a Dungeon and Dragon type themes. Yeah. I think actually the last one I played was really the old uh, versions of Warcraft, not even the online ones where you're playing with other people, but Warcraft 2, where you would like build these little worlds and you'd have you'd fight the orcs and stuff. I had all the Warcrafts at one point in time. I was up to about what, up before they started going to world, the World of Warcraft. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't do World of Warcraft myself. I don't think I even set up an account, but I did the Warcraft. And by the way, do you know there's a movie coming out real soon about the Warcraft world, too? No, I did not. Yeah, it lo really looks good, too. The CGI looks really, really excellent. So They've done so much with, with the CGI nowadays. I mean, a lot of times you've got to look really close to see if it is real or not. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I just wanted, uh, for this one subject, uh, TDD report, I wanted my friend Muzzle Mike, the other person that does... A regular weekly show called In the Lawn, and there'll be a link below in the description to this. I want him to kind of join me for this conversation once in a while for a change instead of just showing you different articles and stuff like that, which is still going to happen. That's most of what the TDD report is about. I just want to throw out different scientific ideas, and I wanted to, since a lot of science fiction movies now they talked about on PBS, they're, they're talking about a real dystopian future, not a positive future, but a real dystopian future to where things have really gone wrong, and I kind of thought... That might be a real possibility if we don't watch it. We could go down that rabbit hole as human beings and not come back up. That's it. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me, Mike. I really appreciate you joining me on the TDD report. Well, thank you for offering.